Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. For this tutorial we'll be running through the heat loss calculations. In order to start this process we'll need to select the building calculations option. Three options will then appear and you'll need to select the heat loss option. You'll only need to complete the heat loss section and other sections in the building calculations area if you're completing calculations for a heat pump or biomass boiler. Once you've selected the heat loss option, a survey page will then appear to collect some details about the property. First of all, you'll be able to input the surveyor name and survey date. These are not compulsory fields as they don't have a red asterisk by them. However, they allow you to collect those details as part of the calculation. It then goes on to some building details where you're able to select the regs region, which will give you a drop down options of the various areas of the United Kingdom to choose from. And then also a date built by option, which again gives you some options in the drop down field. Then move on to four questions about the property. Um, first of all, will the property be using mechanical heat recovery? And the reason this is included as mechanical heat recovery can return a temperature back to the property and will pr provide some heat so the heat pump won't have to work as hard to produce the required temperature. So you have a yes or no option. If you select yes, an option to allow an estimated return temperature will appear. So for this example, we'll just put a degrees of the return temperature in. The next question is, if the, is the property in an exposed location? This means if the property is on top of a hill or close to sea where it's open to the elements. Again, you have a yes or no option to select from. If you select yes, it then gives you an option to allow a percentage for it. The domestic heat and design guide gives guidance to allow a 10% allowance, um, but we haven't set this as a default option so that you can make a judgment on the property that you're working on put in the 10% based on the design guide for this example. The next question relates to if the um, property or the install will be using intermittent heat. Um, this is if the system's running for less than 16 hours a day, it would be classed as intermittent heat. If it's more than 16 hours a day, it's classed as continuous. So again, if you select yes for this option, it'll give you an option to add in an allowance for this. Again, for the domestic heat and design guide, this states around 15% intermittent heat, um, but again, we haven't set it as a default option so that you can make a judgment on the property you are working on. Final question relates to thermal bridging. This is if there's any cold spots within any of the building fabrics within the property. The only way to determine the um, thermal bridging is to use a SAP report, which will give you a percentage allowance for it. Um, it's usually a fairly small percentage, but again, if you select yes for this, you have an option to input that as well. To move on to the next section, you need to select the next button, and this will take you to the room log area. Once you've reached the room log area, you'll then have an option to add room, and you can add all the rooms that make up the property. So if you select that option, it will then give you an area to add the information about the individual room. So for this example, we'll just input that we've been reading. The next three options, you can use the help icon. And this table will give you the desired design room temperatures for, for each type of room and also the air change rate. Um, there's three different categories for the air change rate and these are based on the age of the property. So in our case, we put 2003 to 2006. So category B would be the the air change rate and then for the living room it would be one. So if we go back to it, put 21 degrees in the room design temperature and an air change rate of one. Air change factor is a drop down option that gives you two options 0.33 and 0.34. 0.34 is for properties built 2007 or onwards so in most cases it will be 0.33. Then go on to the room dimensions. If you know the length and width of the room, you'll input them here and it will then calculate the floor area for you. Also, by inputting the height of the room, it will then give you a calculated volume. You can select a manual option for room area and for room volume if you know those figures and calculate them yourselves. Again, the room specification for the mechanical heat recovery, exposed location, intermittent heat and thermal bridging has been pulled through from the previous section. If there's some rooms within the property that don't have mechanical heat recovery for any reason, 
or won't be set up in time. And you can change them to be specific for the room. Click, so select the next button again, and it'll take you through into the next section. Now we're on to the different elements of the room. So the first section relates to internal walls. So in this case, we'll just put an example of one internal wall. It'll then give you options to put in the length of the room. Again, you have a manual option for that you can input the um, area of the room itself. Then have an option to input the adjacent, adjacent room temperature. The reason for this is if there's any heat loss into the adjacent room if it's set at a lower temperature. So we put in an 18 degree temperature for the adjacent room. You then have an option to select the fabric type. And there are some options already inputted for you, or you have an option to custom, which will allow you to input your own new value. But if you select one that's already put in as an option, it will complete the new value for you. But press the next option, we then move on to the external walls. Um, so again, you just put one in as an example in this case. Again, similar to the internal wall, you have an option to input the length for it to automatically calculate the area of the wall for you. And again, the fabric type gives you options which will already pull in the U value for you or a custom option where you can input your own U value. There is an option in this section that's cob as built and cob with insulation. We usually get questions about what cob is and this is basically a substance made from natural resources. So you just select whichever option you need. Which you can see is pulled in U value for you. Now on the previous section we put that there was no allowance for thermal bridging which is why it's pulled through a no option. If you did put thermal bridging on the previous sections it would pull that information through for you as well. Now, different to the internal walls, on the external walls you have an option to input windows and doors. Um, so in this case we'll just we'll put an example of each on here. So first of all the windows. Now, we have had a few issues with people putting the dimensions of the windows in, in centimetres rather than metres. It does ask for it in metres, so just make sure that that is inputted. Again, you have an option to select fabric type and a custom option as well. Um, select one that's already inputted for you. And again, the thermal bridging is pulled through as no for these elements. Same for the doors, the fabric type, it gives you an option to add a custom value or one that's already an option for you. Again, press the next button so that you save that information. You then have an option for party walls. And party walls are basically walls that join um, semi-detached properties or terrace housing. Um, so they're basically walls between individual properties. Um, so similar to the internal walls or external walls, just select the number of party walls and then it will give you an option to fill in the information about that wall. Next option is floor type. Now you could have more than one floor type for a wall if there's been an extension on that, that floor. So we'll just put one in for this case. Then. So you can see it's pulled in the, the length and width automatically and therefore calculated the area already for you. I've got an option for floor type, so suspended or solid. Um, we'll select solid as it's a ground floor one in this case. Floor below, you've got heated space, solid ground or unheated space. Unheated space would be if there's a basement um, underneath the ground floor, which is left unheated. You then have fabric type option again. Again, still got the custom, custom option there as well. Select next, which will take you on to the roof or ceiling option. So again, you've got option to add more than one, as some some buildings and some rooms will have extensions over some parts of the building and not on others. So we'll just we'll just select one for this option. Again, it's pulled through the length and width that you've put in previously, and the area is also calculated. There is all on each section an option to add in manual area as well if you need to. Um, what is above the roof or ceiling, heated or unheated space, 
as this is a ground floor room that we've put in with slightly heated space for this. And again, you have an option to add in the adjacent, adjacent temperature for the room above. And this, if the room above has a lower heat or lower temperature, then some heat loss would be lost through that ceiling. So we have fabric type again. Again, the custom option is available for you, or you can select from the already selected options for you. Um, you've got a roof light option here. So basically, if there's any um, windows in the ceiling or roof, um, you can input them. And again, similar to the windows option, put in the width and height and select the fabric type for it. Once you select next, the design calculations based on the information you just input about that room will then appear for you. So you've got basic, the basic room information that you put in to start with, the details about the design conditions, and then it will go into the table about the ventilation heat loss and the fabric heat loss. And then at the very bottom, you've got a total power heat loss, watts per meter squared, total energy heat loss for heat pump and IMS. If you click save for that, it will then take you back to the room log section and that room will appear in your list of rooms. You then have an option to edit that again by clicking on the pencil icon, delete that room or download a document output for that room as well. So that is a basic run through of the heat loss section. To return to the building calculations section to complete the other areas in the building calculations, just select the back chevron icon and it will take you back to that section. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about this section, please contact your consultant at Easy RSS. Thank you.